coroner said apparently he shed every drop of blood in his body. The entire Law of Attraction community knows about the man named Neville Goddard and how much he explored the occult, spirituality, and the way that our imagination shapes the reality. Neville studied under a rabbi and learned the Kabbalah at a very young age when he moved to New York City. He became successful with his methods of manifestation. What we're going to explore today is his death which it, most people do not understand the circumstance and the way he died. And this death reveals some occultic things about him that I think most people should know about before they dive deep into believing and understanding and using his works. Neville knew when he was about to die and pass on, and like many mystics and spiritualists, they anticipate death with a positive attitude because they believe it is just you passing through another door into a different experience, and that is nothing to be feared. He often said, wake up, there is no death, end quote. And his driver, who is going to be really significant when we uncover the real way in which this man died, actually had a vision of Neville dying as Judas from the Bible. And now Neville would often take the Bible scriptures and call them entirely metaphors. So he would say the 12 disciples are just metaphors for your consciousness. He's taking a scripture and he's twisting it often and he's basically making the entire books of old text into metaphors and this could work and hold up however you can repeatedly see how Jesus debunks the idea that everyone is a god within themselves in Matthew 24 6 and other verses and Neville seeks to constantly do this where he's just twisting scripture so I find it strange how people can read his works and say that the Bible has is not true at all when all he does is take each verse of scripture and use it as a metaphor for how he can reach divine enlightenment and in divine consciousness within his own skull going so far as to say we will all awaken God the Father within us. So he basically believed that he was the great I am and he believed that he was in a way God. <clears throat> so to get right to the point here, his old taxi driver, Frank Carter, went on a lecture, and it's recorded as a podcast that I'll play for you in a minute, and said that he had a dream and a vision about Neville dropping dead in front of a restaurant and dying as Judas and being disemboweled. There's two ways that Judas died. He, there's two traditions that say one said he hung himself, one said he was disemboweled. And the Frank Carter, the driver, said that he saw Neville have an experience where he was disemboweled and he did not tell Neville. And then in a few days, Neville died and Frank Carter was able to go to the house where the body was and speak with the coroner. It is important to note that Neville believed himself to be Judas and that he didn't condemn Judas as the son of perdition. However, he celebrated Judas. He believed that when Judas betrayed Jesus Christ, he was actually revealing and making the truth known about Jesus and the truth of the, quote, messianic secret. And when Judas betrayed Jesus, he was actually doing an honorable thing because he was revealing the truth. And Neville himself, according to Frank Carter and many others who were at his lectures, believed that he himself was Judas. So I'll play for you the part where Frank Carter reveals his dream about Neville. Frank Carter lecture number one, dated June 6th, 1976. Frank Carter, I decided to tell this story about Neville. I decided to use my middle name, which is Emmons. It was my mother's maiden name. My authority rests on the fact that I spent Neville's last day with him. As you all know, Mrs. Goddard was quite ill and she was in the hospital. So Neville, as far as I can figure, knew exactly he was going because he left two documents. Now, what had happened was that three years before he departed, I had the vision of his death as Judas. 
At the time, I didn't know what it was. I saw Neville in front of a restaurant, and I started to speak to him, and suddenly he choked, and he fell back, and when he fell on the sidewalk, he spilled all of his bowels. Well, the dream was so grisly that I simply couldn't tell him, and all that time he was saying from the platform, I love to hear that you have seen me die. Well, I kept hearing him say this, but I still could not bring myself to tell him this awful dream which I had had. So one night I was leafing through scripture and suddenly my eye fell on this passage in the first chapter of Acts. This is the description of Judas. Peter is speaking. He is describing Judas, who is numbered among them in the ministry, and he says, Now this man, with the reward of his inequity, purchased a field, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all of his bowels gushed out. Well, I was so excited I could hardly wait to tell Neville, but it was too late at night. So I practically sat up all night, and when I figured there was a decent hour in the morning, I got on the phone. And I got Mrs. Goddard on the phone, too, because I wanted her to hear this, and I told him. I said, Neville, you are Judas. And he said, yes. Judas betrayed the messianic secrets, and then he said, You know that there are two traditions on the death of Judas. One is in the gospel account where he goes and hangs himself. The other is this account which I just got through telling you how he burst asunder in the midst and all of his bowels gush out. Okay, so now you're going to hear how he actually died and there's a trigger warning because this is very disturbing and you'll hear that he had shed every drop of blood in his body. So this obviously looks like a ritualistic death and people who are knowledgeable about the occult and certain traditions can ascertain their own information from this. I'm not going to draw any conclusions. I'm leading, leaving it up to the viewer and just exposing something that is really relatively unknown about where these types of mystical and mystery school traditions kind of can lead a person to, um, especially when they are using the contact with entities on the other side of the realm, like the astral realm. Um, so this is Frank Carter again speaking. So I rushed over. When I got there, the body had already been sealed off. The authorities were there, the coroner, the county officials, and members of the family of the daughter's friends. The coroner kept asking me what had happened. He said, was Mr. Goddard a heavy drinker? And his daughter said, well, he used to be, but not lately. And he asked me how much he had to drink, and I told him, well, no more. And then I remembered that he had given me the last half of the martini. I said, well, he didn't even have two. And I said, why are you asking me all these questions? And he said, we don't understand all the blood. And I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen the body. With that, he said, come with me. And he took me into the part of the house that was closed off. And there was Neville lying on his back in a rigid position with his arms stretched out like this nude with a napkin over his face, and the coroner said, We don't understand all the blood, see? And with that he reached down and picked up the napkin and showed me, and there was the image which I had seen in my dream all those years before. A terrible, contorted expression on his face, as if he had choked to death. Now that is what I saw in my dream. I saw him choke and then fall backward, and when he fell backward his bowels gushed out. Now, naturally, when he died here on earth, his bowels didn't gush out, his blood gushed out. The coroner said, apparently he shed every drop of blood in his body. And with that, he put the napkin back over Neville's face. And then before we left, he said, we don't understand all the blood, see? And once more, he reached down and picked the napkin up so I could see the face. So I knew in an instant, in a way that I could not understand, a way that I could prove that I was actually seeing scripture, which was written 2,000 years ago, made history, because he had already told his group that he was Judas. I think some of you may remember the lecture some years ago when he talked about the dream, which one of the members of the audience had had, about his death as Judas. And at that time, he explained that Judah is the great revealer because the word Judah comes from Yod, which in Hebrew is the word for hand. Okay, so notice that last part where he said that people were having dreams of his death as Judas. So one big thing is that Jesus told to Judas that you're going to wish that you had never been born. And that basically means to me that Judas is not someone that you want to emulate yourself after in any way because Jesus specifically said you're, you'll wish that you've never been born because Judas was cast into 
a separation with God basically and is not there's no redemption it's a basically like a fallen angel type of situation there and um I just want to end it really here um because the rest of the podcast just goes on to say how Neville was so you know enlightened in knowing that you know he was going to die this way and that this was like an enlightened way and that he had accomplished everything you know and that he was just going to come back and reincarnate um type of thing and I just want to say that this rubs me the totally wrong way because there's no enlightenment to me in a death that looks extremely ritualistic with all of the blood drained out of someone's body um there are tons of cases of this as a ritualistic death and it doesn't seem like this man reached any state of enlightenment after his death and I'm sorry to be a Debbie Downer maybe to people who follow him but I just want to do this as a warning and kind of show that these types of ideas are really just mystical egoism and really not rooted in reality, especially the idea that our entire imagination creates reality. That's just not true on a logical and reality level. Um, it can be partially true, definitely, and once we reach certain states of meditational consciousness, we can actually influence the spiritual world through different practices like sorcery and magnetism and law of attraction. We can definitely do these things, but the question is, should we? And the question is, how far does this go? And if you really want to follow in a man's footsteps who had this type of death where his face was contorted in pain um, because he was doing a reenactment, really, of um, a biblical figure, um, you can make it a metaphor as much as you want, but for me, this is a huge red flag, and I encourage people to look into who they're following as spiritual teachers because, listen, demons can be spiritual too, and you really have to test the spirits, and you really have to know what you're dealing with when you are looking into this type of stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will talk to you guys later.